My name is Mikko Hyppönen and this is the F-Secure Data Security Wrap-Up for the summer of 2010. We'll be looking in this episode especially what happened in the world of mobile security during the summer. So we'll be looking at what's happening in the world of iPhone, Android, Windows Mobile and Symbian devices. And we'll start with iPhone. On the iPhone side, by far the biggest news was the Jailbreak Me exploit, or the Jailbreak Me episode. And this was all about a new website called jailbreakme.com that enabled you to jailbreak your device. Now, there's nothing new in jailbreaking phones or jailbreaking iPhones. What was unusual in the case was the ease of which you could jailbreak your device. You simply visited the website with your iPhone, with your iPad or with your iPod Touch, and it would use an exploit to execute code on your device and use that code to jailbreak the device. Now, if you compare this to traditional world of security, this was as if somebody would have found a zero-day vulnerability from, let's say, Windows and put out an exploit for it without notifying Microsoft. But of course, in the world of phones, this is not that simple. This is not seen as, as it is on the traditional platform. So most of the news about the event were focusing on the jailbreaking side of the story and the ease of which it could now be done. Apple treated this as a security vulnerability, of course, and it should. Because basically the same vulnerability could have been used by anybody to execute malicious code on people's phones and iPads. That never happened though. Um, I, Apple was able to put out a new version of iOS to patch the vulnerability on most of their platforms and the jailbreaking community put out their own patch, which was able to close down the hole, even for the operating system versions that were not supported by Apple. And on the Android side, we saw this game. This game is called Tap Snake. As you can see, it's your average snake clone. What's unusual about the game, though, is that it reports your location. So it's a spying tool. It's actually a component of a commercial spying tool known as GPS Spy. And GPS Spy itself actually runs on an Android phone. So when you buy and install the GPS Spy tool, it explains to you that if you want to see the location of another phone, go and install the TapSnake game on it. And when the game is running, it will report the location of the phone through GPS back to your phone every 15 minutes. In fact, it will report the location even if you shut down the game or even if you reboot the phone. Now, Google has acted on this case and they have removed both the TapSnake game as well as the GBS spy, uh, spying application from Google Marketplace. But it's a good example of the kind of activity we've seen on that side. And of course, one of the differences between Android and the rest of the smartphone platforms is that the Marketplace or App Store model works differently. On Android devices, there's no checking done beforehand by Google. But if there's complaints about an application, then they will remove it from the Marketplace. What about Microsoft? Microsoft has Windows Mobile and the upcoming Windows Phone smartphone operating systems. And on that side, the most important event has been the 3D Anti-Terrorist Trojan. Now, 3D Anti-Terrorist is a game. It's a game that looks like this. That's like a shooting game. It's basically your average Counter-Strike clone that you can play on your Windows Phone or basically Windows Mobile devices. Now, this game is actually made by a Chinese company. Now, the company has done nothing wrong. What happened here is that some unknown Russian hacker took the game, hacked the game and removed copy protection from the game and then uploaded the hacked version of the game to different download sites where people were looking for free games. And what this game actually does behind the scenes is that it starts making phone calls. Suddenly your phone is dialing faraway countries. For example, it's dialing Somalia or Dominican Republic or it's dialing out to South Pole. And the trick they're playing here is that these numbers that the game is dialing behind the scenes actually are so-called international virtual premium rate numbers. Now these are numbers that aren't really premium rate numbers, like for example the 1-900 numbers in USA. These are normal numbers in faraway countries, but these operators that operate these numbers are using a technique known as short stopping or long lining, which basically means that the call never goes to South Pole. It gets stopped, for example, in, in Austria but they still charge you as if you would have called or as if your phone would have called on its own to South Pole. And they keep the rest of the money, which in this case goes back to the Russian hacker. 
So this is a mechanism of actually stealing money straight from your infected smartphone and you'll only notice it the next time you get your phone bill. And we do expect problems like this to get much worse in the future. And then we have one left and that's the Gorilla. That's by far the biggest place in the smartphone market and that's of course Nokia and Nokia Symbian and Migo operating systems. Now if you look at the total count of all the mobile attacks, all the mobile trojans and viruses we've seen, Symbian is by far the most targeted platform. They have over 400 different viruses written for this platform, but most of those are older. Most of those were written in 2004, 5 and 6. And today we actually see much more activity uh, on Android and iPhone based devices than on Symbian based devices. During the summer we did find a new version of the SexyView Trojan, which is this family of signed binaries on Symbian, which actually sends premium rate text messages. So it again tries to steal money from the phones. But the amount of reports we received were very small. The bottom line is that we still haven't seen the event. We still haven't seen the new mobile worm that would go around the world infecting devices everywhere. It could have happened this summer, but it didn't. And of course nobody knows when it really will. But for example, on the iPhone side, the jailbreak me vulnerability could have been used by anybody to write a worm which spreads over text messages, infects your phone, then replicates to every single number in your phone book. A worm like that would go around the world in minutes. However, in the real world, what we've learned by producing software, security software for devices like this, what we've learned is that customers are much more interested in protecting their device against real world problems. Problems like, you know, having their phone stolen or losing their phone. And that's why we've been adding features like this to our security products. So our mobile security products don't just, you know, detect viruses and, and use firewall techniques. They also prevent theft of your phone. They have anti-theft features built in and remote lock and wipe mechanisms. So if somebody steals your phone, You'll be able to see if they've changed the SIM card on the stolen phone. You'll see where they are. You'll be able to remotely remove your data so they don't get access to it. And of course, we will continue watching what's happening in the world of mobile security. Thank you very much.